Hello, and thank you for tuning in. Do you remember back in the day, there was research in the multiple sclerosis world that was looking at the possible effects of clemestine on multiple sclerosis. The hope here was that it would help with remyelination, aka building myelin. As we know, multiple sclerosis is a demyelinating disease. So the thought was if we could build more myelin, then that could make a huge impact for people with MS. Well, that same research has been integral in helping researchers develop an even more effective drug that is currently in phase two trials, and it's showing really promising results for remyelination in humans. And it's about time you know about it. So that's what we're going to be talking about today. First and foremost, if you have missed the other discussions that we've had on remyelination, I would highly suggest you listen to Missing Link podcast, episode number 186. Wow, how crazy that we already have over that number of episodes. Anyways, I digress. Episode number 186 is where you will learn about what remyelination is, how it works, all the basics around remyelination. Today, we're going to be talking about a specific drug that has been shown in research thus far to help with remyelination. So if you need the basics, go back to episode 186 and then come right back here and tune in. So going back to clemestine, if for some reason you didn't hear about that research, no worries, I will catch you up to speed. Clemestine is an antihistamine. And back in 2014, researchers were looking to see if clemestine could induce remyelination, so making more myelin. And what they found was that clemestine was able to create more cells that make myelin. And those cells, not only were they making more myelin, but they were specifically hanging around the areas that had demyelinated fibers, which is exactly what we want. But those cells failed to build myelin. So the cells were there, they were in the right spot, but they weren't making myelin. So due to that, researchers found that clemestine was only modestly effective. So they were definitely onto something, but it wasn't really hitting the mark. Additionally, they found that clemestine was not a targeted drug And what that means is that it was affecting lots of different pathways in the body. And not only that, but also lots of different receptors. And we're going to get into talking about receptors in a bit here. But the goal was that it would target just one receptor and one pathway in the body. But they found that it actually was targeting lots of different ones. Specifically, it was targeting the five receptors in the area instead of one specific receptor. And what we now know is that one specific receptor is insanely important when it comes to remyelinating specifically for multiple sclerosis. So due to the fact that they found clemestine to be somewhat effective, they were able to realize that the ideal drug would be one that would need to zero in on a specific receptor. And this sounds kind of weird, but the way that they were able to determine exactly which receptor is important for multiple sclerosis is through snakes. So scientists used a special toxin that they found from snakes to figure out exactly the right receptor. And if you're interested in the science terminology, the receptor is called M as in Mary, 1R. So M1R is the specific receptor. And due to a toxin in snake venom, they were able to find that this M1R receptor was located in the brain in the specific area that we need in order to build myelin. So now that they knew exactly which receptor was needed, they were able to design a drug that would target just that one receptor without affecting the other receptors. And from the studies I've looked at and the research I dove into, there's five main receptors. So clemestine, 
targeted all five, but this new drug targets just this one. So the goal for this new drug is that it will be able to regrow the myelin coating and hopefully reverse damage caused by MS without causing other unwanted side effects. So let's get a bit more into the research and what is actually happening with this drug. So the researchers used this drug that they created that blocks a specific receptor, and they tested it in mice models that had a mice version of multiple sclerosis, and they found that it worked. They found that it did several things. It blocked the receptor, this M1R, it blocked the receptor much better than clemestine, plus it prompted the cells that make myelin to actually start making myelin, and it crossed the blood-brain barrier, and it reversed the degradation seen in the mouse model of MS. So it didn't just work, it exceedingly worked. It was able to make more myelin and reverse damage that was already in the brain from the mice version of MS. So it went so well that it cleared two phase one clinical trials demonstrating its safety. And it's currently being tested in patients with MS in phase two trials. And in case you're wondering, the phase one trials were back in 2021. So I want to break down how this actually works. So first and foremost, this drug that they are testing is called PIPE 307. PIPE 307 targets this specific receptor that we were just talking about, the M1R receptor. And that receptor is specifically found on cells in the brain that are responsible for making myelin. But the receptor essentially prevents the cells from making new myelin. So this specific receptor prevents the creation of new myelin. So we don't want this receptor. We want this receptor blocked. We want it turned off. So that's what pipe 307 does is it blocks this receptor. So when the receptor is blocked, it allows the cells that are supposed to make more myelin to actually make more myelin. And not only that, but because it's making more myelin, it can also repair the damaged myelin that is surrounding the nerves. And that, my friends, is the definition of remyelination. So ideally with remyelination, we are making more myelin and improving function that was previously lost due to demyelination. And this specific drug that has been shown to make more myelin and restore nerve function previously lost in people with MS has been successful in those trials with mice, showing less disability than the mice that were left untreated. So it's now being tested in people with relapsing MS to see if it can improve things like vision and walking ability, which would indicate that remyelination is happening. So if there are improvements in vision and there are improvements in walking ability, then that would mean that the reason for those improvements is more myelin, aka remyelination. Now, I feel like there's a lot of people who have progressive MS that might be disappointed to hear that this is being tested in people with relapsing MS. But I do personally feel like if this is successful in people with relapsing MS, I feel like the reason they're probably testing it in people with relapsing MS is because that tends to be the group that the majority of drugs are looking to help is the relapsing MS. But if we think about MS, the reason anyone has MS is due to demyelination, whether you have relapsing MS or progressive MS. So I feel like if it does work in people with relapsing MS, I don't see any reason why it wouldn't help people with primary progressive or secondary progressive MS. So we'll have to wait and see what the research says but I feel like it's going to be positive for all people with MS if we get the results that they're hoping for. 
So this is just kind of the quick and dirty information that you need to know about PIPE 307, this new drug that is in phase two clinical trials. And if you want more information, I will put the study that I'm referring to in the show notes in the description. So feel free to check that out. Also, if you're interested in participating in one of these clinical trials, there's two best things that you can do. Number one, ask your neurologist if they themselves are participating in this study, or if they're not, do they know of anyone in the area that is, and you might be able to get in. Number two, go to clinicaltrials.gov. So this is specifically for the United States. I do think Europe and other countries have their own version of this, but clinicaltrials.gov is a place where you can see what clinical trials are currently happening, which ones have been completed. So go there, type in multiple sclerosis and PIPE 307, and that's where you'll be able to see the previous studies that have been completed, the phase one trials, and you'll find any currently recruiting studies as well. Just to make things easier, I will put clinicaltrials.gov link down in the show notes as well. So just click that and then you'll be able to search for it. As always, I will, of course, keep you up to date as soon as I hear more information about PIPE 307 or any other clinical trials that are helping with remyelination. If you like this video and you want me to share more content like this, please remember to like, share, and subscribe. Thanks so much for tuning in. Mm -hmm.